What is going on everyone? Nostalgia Not Far coming at you with another Digimon conversation episode. In this one we are going to be discussing a Digimon that was heavily requested and while doing my research I do have to say that I was quite impressed at this particular Digimon Digivolution line and that for numerous reasons. Those reasons will be elaborated in a moment. Before we get there, I want to salute all my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel along with Congo Network, a channel dedicated to unveiling the history of the African country Congo where I am originally from. So in this video, the Digimon we are going to be discussing is Goblimon, maybe better known as Goburimon, an evil Digimon derived from the Goblin, a monstrous creature that appears in the folklore of multiple European cultures. Those who follow me for a while know that we have a sub-series called Digimon Mythology, the series where we take a look at the mythological inspiration for certain Digimon. At some given point, we are going to be discussing the Goblin in that sub-series. Now again, because Goburimon is known as an evil Digimon, it should be of no surprise that it belongs to the Nightmare Soldiers family. Members of this field are generally demonic or undead Digimon or those who dwell in haunted areas. It also belongs to the Nature Spirits family. Members of this field are generic animal or monster-like Digimon or those who dwell in desert-like areas. What I like a lot about Goburumon is that it lacks in courage. Sure, society sort of enjoys blaming people who lack a bit in courage, but if we really were to find ourselves in a hostile universe just like the Digimon world, where basically anything can kill you, it is not a surprise that you may lack in courage and you don't have to be ashamed for that. To make up for that missing courage, Goburumon never acts alone. And that is very wise if you wish to live a little longer. United we stand, divided we fall. At this moment, I am currently watching the Walking Dead series and I notice that every now and then the group is being divided into multiple little groups and you can clearly notice that these individual groups are missing in manpower. So you have to give credits to Goburumon for finding an effective way to survive in such a hostile universe. Goburumon will never attack alone and as a group, the members are always concealed in buildings or in the bowers of a forest. So on top of that, they remain hidden in spots which are not always easy to find. So really, these aspects about Goburumon should already impress you because that's how you can adapt in a world where survival of the fittest is the only rule. And I'm not even done with Goburumon's qualities. If the group were to come to a disadvantageous situation, they all flee as fast as they can and while doing so, they scatter in all directions. By doing so, not only would you, as an individual, have more chances of surviving the challengeful situation, it also gives more chances to the group to remain alive. So it should be of no surprise that Goburumon's intelligence is a little higher than other rookie Digimon. You really have to give it credits. And by the way, there is another mega level Digimon called King Chessmon, who we discussed in explaining Pawn Chessmon Digivolution Land video, who is also known to be a coward and never attacks by itself. It even has the following catchphrase, he that fights and runs away may live to fight another day. Society may certainly label it as a coward, but do you realize that King Chessmon's intellect is surprisingly on the same level as a supercomputer? Never forget, courage is more than just fighting and confronting. It also asks courage to run away to avoid a fight you cannot win. Goburumon's adaptability is so impressive that it gains numerous variations on numerous Digimon continents. Snow Goburumon is one variant coming from a snowy country. It has a vest and a hat, so the cold doesn't bother it. It still uses a weapon to defend itself, but it also gains new abilities like spitting icicles from its mouth or breathing out freezing cold to encase the foe in ice. It can do so because, despite the fact that it still belongs to the Nature Spirits family, it now also belongs to the Deep Savers family. Members of this field are generally aquatic or polar Digimon or those who dwell in marine areas. It does not belong to the Nightmare Soldiers family anymore, as was Goburumon. Another variant is called Shamanmon. Now, depending on the media depiction, it can either be dark, green, or even brown. Shamanmon has a name deriving from shamanism, which is a religious practice that involves a practitioner, meaning a shaman, who is believed to interact with the spirit world through altered states of consciousness. Shamanmon is a Goburumon that still has the same method of living but also has another duty. It listens to the will of God and conveys that to its clan. This does leave me with the question, which God would that be? Ultimately, in the Digimon universe there are a great many gods, or in the least, godlike entities with godlike powers. Shamanmon in my eyes is the smartest of all Goburumon variations because it has different priorities. As far as we know, Goburumon and Snow Goburumon have not really a purpose aside of surviving. Shamanmon and its team are united by a belief. They even developed a certain culture with rituals. 
During its rituals, it performs a mysterious dance and once it gets all fired up to the maximum, it becomes able to hear the prophecies of God, as is said. By making use of the rituals, the group can also predict matters that are of importance to the clan, and this should bring more cohesion within the group, which is very impressive. I do have to say that each Goburumon variant sort of have their lines, except that Shamanmon's line will not be discussed in this video for the simple reason that it is very, very unique. We can already see Fugamon being its next form. However, another line is that of Apemon, a very cool looking Digimon that we certainly need to discuss in future videos. Now, note that Fugamon in appearance, as in character, is related to Ogremon. It just developed differently depending on specific circumstances. The same goes with Yogamon, who is Snow Goburumon's champion. It developed in those freezing areas, changing its abilities completely. Now, Ogremon is a demon Digimon resembling an Oni in Japanese folklore. But notice, an ogre is a legendary monster usually depicted as a large hideous man-like creature appearing in various folklores and mythologies throughout the world. An oni, on the other hand, is portrayed as a hawking figure with one or more horns growing out of their heads. It almost looked like the Balinese mythological creature Barong, who we discussed in that particular episode. You can always check it out in the description box. Ultimately, these are all Southeast Asian figures, so I wouldn't really be surprised if one influenced the other. Ogremon really is the next form of Goburumon in a sense that everything Goburumon was good at, Ogremon grew way better. For example, it still has a habit of holding something to hit foes. It gained huge muscles, enabling it to exhibit tremendous destructive power once it hits someone with that bone club. And that bone club it carries, by the way, is said to be a femur of a slain skull Greymon. A femur is also known as the thigh bone. This does leave me with a very important question. We're watching the Digimon anime. When a Digimon dies, it usually just disappears. But here we have a slain skull Greymon that did not disappear. So my question is, how does death really work in the Digimon universe? That is something we have to discuss in one dedicated video. Now Ogremon, unlike how it is sometimes depicted in various Digimon media, is actually high in intelligence. Not only it is not a Digimon you can fool easily, in fact, I would even believe that Orgrimmo with its intelligence would be the one fooling you before you even believe that you're doing the same. The only downside I would say is that it has a rough temper, which is the driving force behind its destructive anger. There are other Digimon with a similar temper, like for example Lalamon and Palmon who we discussed in the Lalamon and Palmon comparison video. If you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out, I'll put the link towards it in the description box. Orgrimmon is a very hostile and aggressive Digimon despite its high intelligence. It gained the label Digimon Hunter due to seeking to fight bold Digimon with as much combat power as itself. And one of the rivals would be Leomon, an outstanding combat species Digimon that we discussed in explaining Leomon Digivolution in video. I think that their rivalry should certainly be discussed properly, as I'm sure there's much to tell about it. Now before we go ahead, I do have to say that Orgrimmon does have multiple Digivolution lines, like for example, one that would make it become an Etamon. But that line in particular will be discussed separately, especially knowing that Etamon is a fan favorite. And there is so much to tell about Etamon, so we're going to divide it. The Ogremon line we are going to discuss is the one of Digitamon, a Digimon that is classified as a perfect Digimon. What the perfect means is a mystery to me. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that an egg in the Digimon universe marks the beginning and end of all Digimon. It does sound dark in some way. Now I can imagine that when looking at Digitamon, the only thing you see is an egg with green legs. Green legs, which can be seen as a reference to Goburumon and Orgamon, by the way. But trust me when I say it, there is so much that can be said about Digitamon. I was surprised when working on this video. To me, Digitamon is almost like an embodiment of mysteriousness. Because for starters, you don't even know what it's all about. It is clear that it did not fully develop when you look at it. So the question is, what if the content of the egg comes out. Another thing that I found interesting is that because it is an egg, I'm sure some of you might have believed that it is a weak Digimon. But you'd be surprised at how wrong you are. It has a bunch of psychic abilities attacking with various mysterious powers. And it is covered with an exoskeleton, though shaped like an egg, that can render all attacks aimed towards it meaningless. So that is saying something. Now let me show you something very important. It's a quote concerning Digitamamon, which you can find in DigiWiki. It is said that this Digitamamon, being at the apex of Digivolution, will not digivolve from normal Digimon and will never digivolve unless it fuses with data from another dimension. 
another dimension. I do know that the Digimon universe harbors many locations and mysteries. What I can tell at this point is that we already discussed a mysterious alternate dimension called Wichelny, in a video that was, by the way, about 40 minutes long, where even Piedmon was involved. I have to mention Piedmon because a great many comments are referring to Piedmon, so if you want some information, you can certainly find it in that video. Now, I can only talk theoretically, but please listen to what I have to say because I will link Wichelny to Digitamamon. One next form of Digitamamon is called Devitamamon, with a name referring to the devil. We are talking about a mutant type mega level Digimon. There aren't many mutant type Digimon, so it's always interesting to come across these types to learn more about them. Now, listen to this. It is said that Digitamamon dark digivolved into Devitamamon. I am convinced that most of you know what dark digivolution is all about. It's the same as what you had with Skull Greymon. We are talking about a corrupt form of regular Digivolution, usually resulting in evil Digimon. And Devitamamon as a Mega Level should probably be more dangerous than a Skull Greymon. Here's the mystery, we don't know who or what caused a Digitamamon to Dark Digivolve, because in the end to Dark Digivolve, there needs to be external influences. So in this case, it's not really clear. One thing is sure, Devitamamon is a being like Pandora's box, meaning that it is filled with all the evils of this world. Everything it sees and touches will be turned into objects of hatred. So that is already one of its capabilities. The other, well, as is written, Devitamamon recites and masters magic through a lost ancient high level programming language, except that the magic effects are used for nothing more than destruction. Now, high level programming language is another name for Wichelny's sorcery. Normally, a Digimon need to get into that alternate universe to learn magic. This makes me believe that Digitamamon might have been in Wichelny before it digivolved into Devitamamon, because there's no other way to learn how to use high level programming language. Now, let me go deeper on my theory. We know that Devitamamon is a dark digivolution of Digitamamon, but what might have happened to a Digitamamon in Wichelny? What caused it to dark digivolve? I know that not all members of Wichelny are revealed, however, Digitamamon is not known to be a member of Wichelny. Maybe it got there and was abused in some way by certain members of that universe and Dark Digivolved. Maybe. One thing is sure, you don't learn high level programming language just like that. They even have a school in Wichelny to teach the next generation on how to use magic and some of them can only use one element, so it's a difficult process. We don't really know what exactly caused Digitamamon to become a Devitamamon, however its purpose is to bring chaos and it does so by using magic. Now one thing is certain, we will have to get back to Devitamamon once we have more information or theories, so I'm hoping that you all will write down your ideas as to what caused Digitamamon to Dark Digivolve and how its other form suddenly masters magic, which possibly can only be learned in Wichelny. If you thought that Devitamamon is a badass, Wait until you see Digitamamon's other Digivolution, it really blew my mind. Here is Titamon, a godman Digimon with one of the most coolest designs I have seen so far and a killer background story. The Titan of Revenge Titamon is born from the hatred of the Digimon defeated by the Olympus 12 in battles over the sovereignty of the digital world. So first of all, what battles are we talking about? Which Digimon universe are we talking about? Which Digimon server are we talking about? When I say server, in case you do not know, in the digital world there exists different servers that is ruled by a supreme entity. We have for example the digital world server known as Iliad. It is a digital world that exists on a different server to the one ruled over by the supreme entity Egdrasil, that also commands the royal knights and seems to be managed by the Olympus 12, the same group of Greek inspired god Digimon Titamon seeks to destroy. So this is already very badass when it comes to Tatamon, and yet there is more. It earned the nickname One Man Squad, and is treated as if it was a legend, despite being a single being, because it is able to instantly summon a might host. This sort of reminds me of the character Ermac in the Mortal Kombat franchise, who is one body filled with many souls of different warriors. And maybe similar to Ermac, Tatamon's large arms are covered in a multitude of skulls, and these skulls are all data of the power it has stolen from the enemies it has defeated so far. So this is making it already very dangerous. And it bears all that inexhaustible energy 
seeking for the heads of the Olympus 12. And on top of that, Tatamon uses a sword called Zanjinto, which stands for Beheading God Sword. It's a bone sword carved from Skull Raymond's bones. And that hatred feeling the sword is making a low growl, making Tatamon all the more intimidating. This Digimon, as it is the first time I've seen it, definitely is in my top 10, if not top 5 Digimon for a killer background story and a design. And to tell you the truth, I can see it come in contact with the Bansho team, a team that is ready to fight not only the Royal Knights but also the Celestial Digimon if they were to be seen as obstacles to their self-defined justice. Tatamon is relatively the same except that it seeks the Olympus 12 and on top of that, you would say that godlike entities like the Olympus 12 would have a good alignment. I mean, they would have good intentions in the actions, right? However, what you have to know is to every action, there is always going to be some form of reaction. There will be consequences. And I feel like Tatamon is one of those reactions. And that is why I love the Digimon universe so much. There is so much going on that you can't even tell who or what is evil. The Olympus 12 are not necessarily bad, but might have had their reasons in those battles over sovereignty of the Digimon world. And now the question is, how many did the Olympus 12 really kill? And accordingly, how powerful would Titanmon be? We'll have to dig much, much, much deeper in our research. Hi guys, this is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Me, I'm really pumped up and can't wait to discuss something else about Digimon. I can't even believe that Digitamon would be such a badass. In fact, I didn't even know Ogremon would be such a badass because I like to look at the whole line as just one. There's really so much the Digimon developers can do with Digimon, seriously. Oh, and I just noticed I didn't even tell that Ogremon holds the femur of Skull Greymon and Titanmon is holding another part of Skull Greymon's bones, only showing that they are so related. Gosh, the Olympus 12 have enemies, the Royal Knights have enemies, the Bancho team has enemies, the Celestial Digimon have enemies, and by the way, some of which are within their Celestial Circles. Not to mention that the Digimon universe has known many battles throughout its existence, it has known an Ice Age, I made a theory that which only was destroyed after the X program was launched, with only a handful of survivors, what is going on? The more I'm exploring Digimon, the more I want to know about it because there is really so much going on, so much is hidden, so we really need to dig, 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 and I'm so ready to do that. By the way guys, at some given point, I will have to make exclusive Digimon episodes about the X variations. I hope you're not going to be bothered by it, because in explaining Palmon and Lalamon episode, I realized that the way I compared the two Digimon, I should also do that with the X variants, because ultimately, we're still talking about those who survived something big. So we really need to discuss them separately, that we have a better image about what they're all about. So you can certainly expect me to return to some older videos and talk about them again and do some updates because you see the Digimon universe is constantly being updated and we're still getting new information so obviously I will have to make some updates. If you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and let us stay together in our Digimon research. The franchise has so much to offer so you really have to be part of us because we're going to take a look at every detail possible. If you are new, you have to know that all my Digimon videos are placed in specific playlists. Make sure to consult them, that way it's going to be easier for you to catch up on the newest and the oldest videos.